So number one, expand on the occurrences of parasites in your animals and how you deal with them. How do you prevent them? Um, so up to this point, I have only, and we've raised pigs on our property every year since we've lived here and many years before that. Mm -hmm. So for at least nine years now, we've done pigs every year. Mm -hmm. And I find the greatest threat to my, um, uh, the greatest source of parasites are the pigs themselves. So when oh, I, interesting. yeah, when I, when I buy the wieners and they come with a load of worms, that is so annoying. So, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I'm really, that's, in fact, that is so annoying that I'm at the point where I, I welcome and I seek, seek people selling pigs who kind of automatically deworm their pigs before they sell them. Um, because you're starting with a blank slate. Uh, and then, you know, if you're bringing pigs that already have parasites, it, it just, it's a domino effect and you... Other pigs can get it, and then you have whole paddocks, especially if you're rotating pigs through paddocks or sacrifice areas that are contaminated, you know, with a parasite load. So he, you specifically mentioned prevention, Jordan, and that's what I think of. Get clean wieners, number one. And I know it sounds obvious, but good grief. Having to deworm constantly is such a, a trouble that could in 99% of the cases be avoided just by getting wieners that start clean. So that's a big one. Um, the other prevention I have found is raw dairy. That's a big one. Mm. Um, and I don't have the scientific uh, link. Well, I could make up the scientific language for why it is so effective. But um, and so could you. So I'm not going to go there. But in my experience, my pigs that get raw dairy are just the most sleek, plump, radiant, happy, worm-free pigs I've ever raised. Mm -hmm. And that has been vindicated in my experience every single time without a single exception. <laughs> so, and by raw, so I've got, a, we've got BurtonHillFarm.com. Uh, they are a goat dairy that's close by. And he makes wonderful goat cheese that everyone should try when you come to Vashon. You can go right up to the farm and purchase cheese from their farm stand, Chev and smoked blue cheese. But he creates lots of whey and he raises pigs off of his whey and he's got so much that I can come and get about four buckets a week. And so when I do that, I am soaking the pigs, fresh cracked barley, peas, wheat, and some oats, um, Purchase locally so it's fresh, if mm -hmm. you know what I mean. I, I soak that in the whey mm. for a, as long as possible, for as long as that is manageable. So at least, you know, 24 hours is great, hopefully more. And when I do that, it ferments big time. And so it's bubbling, you know, it is active, especially in warm weather. And so this is where I'm going to make up the scientific rhetoric for this. But I think that you are giving them a, you know, they're eating like it's almost kefir you know it's really fermented mm -hmm. and the way that i get itself has never been refrigerated so it's incredibly bioactive mm -hmm. there's lots of microbes in there and so that i think keeps the ph of the pig's guts really low which i think is probably unpleasant you know to parasites i don't know what it is but it works it it works so raw dairy is the best prevention i have ever used mm -hmm. um and then I guess the other thing I would say is if, and this has happened several times throughout the years, I don't have access to raw dairy for whatever reason. You stopped, Riz. <laughs> and if I can't get it, then uh, I try other means of acidification, working on my theory that perhaps it is the acidified gut that helps um, in pigs. I'll, I'll use apple cider vinegar. I'll dump that in the bottom of the five gallon bucket, put the dry crushed or cracked barley peas, wheat in there, and then fill it with water. Mm. And I get the nice stuff, you know, brags, and, and that will bubble up too, because, but it might be more of a fungal thing. I don't know. And I don't think that's as effective. I mean, it, it's better than nothing. And I definitely waste a lot less feed that way because it's wet and it's broken down a little bit. And so they spill less, but really weighs whey or skim milk from a raw dairy is 
pretty pretty essential. Mm-hmm. If I if the pig does get worms or if they come with worms, it's such a horrible thing that I'm I am not above saving a pig with dewormer. So I will inject a pig with ivomectin. Um, not if we're if we plan to sell it as shares. I'll never do that with a share pig. But I always get one or two extra in every batch of pigs, and they will go to us, you know, the extras. We will eat them. And um, if, one, if I feel like one is really slowing down, I'll, I'll give it an injection just to deworm it because it's better than losing a pig. So that's how I prevent them. Dairy. And then the other thing is try to keep them off their own poops. Uh-huh. Uh, so movement. Mm-hmm. And keep them off grass. So in my experience, the most common parasite is roundworm. And I think this is subject to region. I mean, there are different parasites that have different pathologies. Is that the word? Life cycles, life forms, and they uh, come at pigs different ways from different sources. And it's Mm. totally regional. In my region, it's roundworm. Mm -hmm. And roundworm is a little parasite that starts on the tops of the blades of grass. This is crazy, okay? And they will actually house themselves somehow in the dewdrops on blades of grass. Dewdrops. And I have definitely noticed that pigs who are put on grass right away are more prone to get parasites. Because they'll go out there and the nefarious roundworm will sneak in there through the dewdrops when the pigs are grazing. I know, it's crazy. And um, so that's, that's one thing. And I and I, I think you know we've talked about this before too that parasites in or pigs on pasture is kind of a new thing. I like to think of pigs' natural habitat. Make sure the sound's coming through. Yeah, it is. Pigs' natural habitat is uh, understory forest. That's what they do. They clear that stuff, and that is actually better for them than grass. And grass isn't bad, but they're not ruminants. They're not going to just like nip it perfectly like a cow mowing the pasture. They're going to um, destroy it, essentially, unless they're coonies, in which case they'll graze, which we've talked about before, if they're well managed. But usually, like if it's a grass-fed pig, which isn't really a thing, and they're on pasture, they will be going under the turf, lifting it up, destroying it, eating the roots of it. So that the destruction of the pasture coupled with the parasitism makes grass kind of unideal for pigs. They're pioneers. They go in and they turn understory into pasture for your ruminants who do not destroy, but rather build up pasture. So, and by pasture, I mean grass, grasses and legumes. So uh, that was, those are ways to avoid parasites. Forest understory, I think, is a better place for them. Hmm. And then um, I have my doubts about the effectiveness of diatomaceous earth. I know that's usually put out there as a natural way, but I think if it is moist, it loses its effect. If it doesn't, because I think the way diatomaceous earth works is it actually lacerates the bodies of the parasites and kills them. And I'm sure it does a similar number on the soft tissue of the internal intestinal lining, but I'm not sure. This is all just speculation. I just haven't noticed it being that effective for me. And uh, if I do use diatomaceous earth, I put it in the sacrifice zone in between pig batches. So I'll just dust it right on the ground um, to kind of... And it being a sacrifice area, it's covered from rain, so it's dry all year, which means hopefully if there are any wormies... Uh, left behind by the previous batch, they will be mostly uh, lacerated by the diatomaceous earth. So that was the parasite question. Okay. Uh, What do you do if you find them dug into the meat? I am not sure, but I think the only worm you would see in the meat is one that is very uncommonly ever seen in pigs. Much of the parasites are microscopic. You can't see them with the naked eye, except for roundworm, which lives in the small intestine, and it's like a long earthworm. Um, so I think you would, if you, you would notice that the pig has parasites not by looking at the, the pork chop, 
but by the living pig. It's, it's like always very obvious to me when a pig gets parasites. Observe your pigs, you know. And um, the telltale sign to me and of any pig is if they are skipping meals. Then I scrutinize them and I watch them very closely and I wonder, why are you not eating? Mm. You're a pig. Pigs eat. And all your brothers and sisters are just destroying their food morning and evening and you are not what is going on inevitably inevitably that was a combination of two words <laughs> inevitably you will notice that um missing meals will be accompanied by slowness of movement pigs are like fast twitchy animals they uh mm -hmm. their heads are like they're jaunty you know they're always on their toes literally <laughs> and they're you know their heads they're just they move when they're, uh -huh. you know, when it's doing this stuff and it's slow, even if they're still eating and they're, uh, he or, yeah, yeah, that is always a red flag to me. Mm -hmm. Something's going on. And then pretty soon after that, you'll notice that they'll start to lose weight. They, with roundworm, they will cough. So all that to say, and usually they'll just be behind. Like all the other pigs will just be blimping up and there'll be one who's behind. Very rarely is that, well, he's a runt mostly it's um he's got a load that's mm -hmm. holding him back parasites are holding him back so all that to say you best to do or detect parasites i think in the living pig rather than in the finished meat and pretty much all parasites that i am aware of like trichinosis for example are killed at 140 degrees fahrenheit which is about as rare as you would cook any pork anyway uh so yeah mm-hmm I've never found a parasite dug into the meat. The meat, that would actually be trichinosis. That is mm -hmm. a flesh-eating worm. And pigs only get that by eating the raw, infected flesh of another animal. They don't get it by the, from the tips of the blades of grass. They don't mm -hmm. get it by eating fecal matter. They only get it by eating carrion, mm -hmm. dead animals that have the trichina worm in their flesh. Mm -hmm. um, which is like, doesn't happen. You're not feeding your pigs deer carcasses or rats. Um, and, you know, they're not even going to hunt rats if you're bringing them food twice a day, to be honest. Even if there's rats around. They're just... Pigs are omnivores, not predators. They, they are opportunists and they like economy of effort. Mm -hmm. So they're not going to waste time hunting if they don't have to. Have to. Mm -hmm. So I hope that's, that's the parasite stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I concur with... Finding a good breeder that gives you pigs. Yeah, that are clean. That are clean. I mean, we still, we just recently had a pig that we had to, yeah. had to cull. And it wasn't because you raised it poorly. The other pigs are fine. It mm -hmm. was, we actually still don't know exactly what went wrong. Because we did a few things. We dewormed it and it still didn't perk up. Mm -hmm. And it just was sick. Yeah. I guess we could have done antibiotics, but we I think we were well that's so hard once you get into the injection game then you're looking at the residue time timing mm -hmm. so with us it's you, you'll never be encounter this you know oh this pig is slowing down should I kill it now assuming that this is just going to go downhill from here or do I inject it right if I inject it I can't kill it for how whatever the right. residual time says on the bottle give right it a fair trial yeah yeah but usually a month or so yeah right? yeah and but if you if you do inject it and it doesn't perk up then it's just going to get worse uh -huh. and thinner 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 sicker 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 and you're not going then you know then it's like well is it safe to kill this animal at this point <laughs> definite because you have to wait mm. for that withdrawal period before mm. you can not withdraw but before the residue of the antibiotic or the yeah. anti-parasite if you're medication gonna actually... is out of the system if you're going to harvest it. If you're going to harvest if it. If you just bury it like we did, then... Which is horrible. That's a loss. Like, I... Yes. I every time, I almost... Well, you know, it has worked for me twice. I have... I gave a pig an antibiotic mm -hmm. twice. Yeah. We were raising pigs in the winter, and it was damp, and it was wet, and I didn't have whey. Didn't have raw That's milk. Right. And one was going... It was... To me, it was obviously pneumonia, which right. is a thing that swine get that you will recognize. Just sickly, just like what I described. Yeah. Gave him an antibiotic, perked right back up. Uh -huh. He was back. Yeah. So that one worked. Uh huh. But yeah, I, it's it's hard. This last pig, I wish the moment he was slowing down, even though he was small, I wish I would have just boom mm -hmm. done, killed him, and then we could have eaten him. Fine, you know, it would it would have been fine. Mm -hmm.